Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad and the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website, javacjava.com, select menu, Java OOP tutorials. I'm going to scroll down here to the exceptions throw keyword. The throw keyword is used to manually cause an exception to occur. A throw statement can throw either a checked or an unchecked exception. Um, the structure of a throw statement looks like this. Basically you have uh, throw and then the new keyword and then the exception class, right? And then any argument list, which is optional by the way, and followed by a semicolon. So in this tutorial I will demonstrate how to throw an unchecked exception. Throwing a checked exception requires an understanding of how to use the throws, right, plural keywords. So I will demonstrate how to throw a checked exception in my next tutorial. Okay, let's come down here and highlight all this source code here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. I'm gonna move my browser off screen here. Now I've got a shortcut to the command prompt on my desktop, but if you don't, you can create one really quick by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. Type in CMD next and finish. It's just that easy. Um, first thing I'm going to do is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command, and then I'm going to press enter. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you don't, if you receive an error message, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen, then CD space backslash CD is short for change directory and backslash tells it to go through. I'm going to make a directory here called Java. Now we're using the MD command. Now I already have that folder, but if you don't, I'll go ahead and create it for you. I'm going to change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here called uh, exception. Uh, we'll go with throw. Change directories to the exception throw folder. I'm going to notepad make, uh, exception throw.java. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and paste the source code in here. I'm going to go ahead and file and save. And basically what I've got here is I've got a box class and I've got an exception throw class. An exception throw class has the main method entry point here. And my box class is the one I'm going to be creating some box objects out of here. Now I've got um, int, length, height, and width all set to zero and they're all private. They're all encapsulated here. And then I've just got a single constructor that takes three parameters, int, length, width, and height. And then I've got this calculate volume method down here. One thing about the calculate volume method is we don't ever want to return the volume of a box as like zero or negative value, right? It should always be um, at least, you know, one or more. So the, uh, the length, height, and the width, we want to ensure that they're never ever set to any sort of zero or negative values. So inside of the box constructor, inside of its class right here, Basically, I'm saying um, if length is less than equal to zero or height is less than equal to zero or width is less than equal to zero, then I'm using the Java keyword throw. And then we have to say new because illegal argument exception is an object. This is an actual class, right? And so illegal argument exception is a subclass of runtime exception, which is an um, unchecked exception. I'm going to show you over here. Um, as you get more familiar with all of these exceptions, you can you can find quite a few of them to throw there. There's a couple different schools of thought on throwing unchecked and checked ex exceptions, but I'm not going to get into that. Um, but anyway, a legal argument exception is a direct subclass of runtime exception, right? And so it also had some had some more subclasses under a legal argument exception, but it kind of seemed like a good one to pick to throw here as far as unchecked exceptions there, because basically if any of these are coming in as less than or equal to zero, it really will be an illegal argument. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the standard runtime exception uh, subclass of illegal argument exception and throw that if any of those are off. Okay, and then if you know if if it doesn't throw the new illegal argument exception, program will continue to run down here. However, if it does, right, none of these will actually execute, right? And so basically. Um, you know, if, if these are greater than or equal to zero, all three of those parameters would go ahead and set the instance variables length, height, and width uh, equal to whatever the parameter variables values are coming in there. All right, so 
Up here in the main method, first thing I'm doing is declaring a reference variable box one of box type, setting equal to a new box object, a reference to a new box object, and invoking the box constructor here, right? Passing it 10, 3, and 4. And then I'll display to the console the volume of box one is plus box one dot calculate volume. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is create a box two reference variable of box type, set that equal to reference to a new box object, and invoke the box, cons box constructor with negative six, eight, and seven, and then display this to the console. So this, this is going to produce an error right here, and I'm not doing any sort of trapping or anything like that. Let's go ahead and just set, select save on this here, right? our screen, Java C to compile this, Java to run it. Okay, and we get the volume of box one is 120, and then we get exception in thread main, java.lang.illegal argument exception at box, and then when you see this dot init, basically it's in its constructor there, and then the name of the file exception throw.java line 18. And then further down the uh, the stack there, you know, it basically shows you where it was originally called from, exception throw.main, and then in the exception throw.java line six, right? So line six being this right here is what where the um, constructor was called there. And then um, line 18 is where I threw the new illegal argument exception, right? You can see maybe down here where it says line 18. All right, so that is, that's pretty much that. So of course, you know, because we throw a new illegal argument exception there, we would document that in the box constructor class. For the box class, when we document the box constructor that takes that, we would say, oh, it throws illegal argument exception, right? So that way someone uh, who's using our box class could come down here and put in their, their try catch stuff here, right? Exception E, boy, I'm telling you, I'm not typing well today. Uh, let's speed that up a little bit, right? We can either do E, which will invoke the two string override method portion of this illegal argument, or we can do like E.get message, right? Which is a method that it will inherit from the throwable class. So let's go ahead and save that. Looks pretty good to me. And let's recompile this. Clear our screen. Rerun it. And um, the volume of box one is 120. And then caught exception null. All right. Um, okay. Apparently, um, illegal argument exception, let's see, let's pull back up its stuff here. Okay, no detail message. I'd have to pass it some sort of string in order to get it to actually s to display something to the message. So we could go ahead and do like something like, um, we can actually pass it in stuff like this, right? Um, we can use the default illegal argument. I'm actually kind of glad that null happened there because that gives me a chance to explain something else up here. You know, it still caught the exception, but it was the return value on that was null. So one of the things we can do with these standard, with these classes that are underneath the runtime exception here, a lot of them have constructors that take string, which is a, a detailed message there. So we can use the, the runtime exceptions or the unchecked exceptions, and we can pass it st something like this, right? Uh, measurements have to be greater than zero, right? Bada -bada -bada. So by doing this, we now are invoking the, um, the constructor for the illegal argument exception and passing it the string one here. So when we uh, put the, the get message here, that's gonna go ahead and display that to the console rather than the plain old null that we got the first time there because I wasn't passing anything in there. All right, let's go ahead and clear our screen, recompile. 
Okay, so there we go. Volume box one is 120. Caught exception. Measurements have to be greater than zero. All right, so this this basically, I'm just going to throw in, you know, if we were to put in like an actual good vault value there, that'll just go ahead and compile and run just properly there. Um, throw in a nice zero value over here. Save this up there. Let's clear our screen, recompile, right? Um, Cod exception measurements have to be greater than zero. All right, so basically, yeah, the that's that's pretty much it for the throw. You can throw anything you want. You can throw checked exceptions, unchecked exceptions. Now, I'm just throwing unchecked exceptions, and you know, once again, like illegal argument exception, I, I just know about that through some sometime in the past. You know, I learned about that exception, and and that's pretty much what you learn. When I say you got to just kind of do trial and error on a lot of these things, and you'll you'll see some of these these runtime exceptions, they're quite handy too as well. And you know, there's there's some controversies to, you know, using runtime, throwing runtime exceptions versus throwing, uh, or throwing unchecked exceptions versus um, checked exceptions as well. But you know, that's just really beyond the scope of this tutorial. I'm just showing you how to do either one there. And they're both proper. Like for example, like, um, a language like C Sharp doesn't even have checked exceptions. It's all unchecked exceptions there. So, um, you know, there's there's some different controversy regarding that there. But so that's how to throw unchecked exceptions. Throw new and then the um, the exception class there that you're creating a new object out of there, right? And then you have to catch it somewhere along the line too as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and move that off screen and get rid of that and just leave you guys with some final thoughts there. So stay tuned for my next tutorial where I will show you how to throw a checked exception. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.